Hello, Macy here. This is IP Corvette Elysium Mark IV utility class. Um, all I've really done is taken the RCS thrusters from the back, which are pretty redundant in this version of the game. Um, I want to try and deploy a probe from the front of this ship. I can just about afford a little extra weight at the front, although it's going to be slightly harder to take off. Um, this is a private pleasure flight to visit one of the lunar arches, moonar arches, so um, if you don't want to see a moonar arch, because it is an easter egg, then please uh, don't watch this video. I haven't been to either of Kerbin's moons for some time actually, because since they added planets to the game, other planets to the game, I've been um, obviously preoccupied with those. But there is a few easter eggs on the moon, um, a number of which are these lunar arches, which I've never seen, so I wanted to go out and maybe this is the last flight Elysium will do before I lose interest and move on to something else, but I want to go and visit one of these lunar arches, so I've been given um, a location by Suestra Gaming, one that he found, so I'm just going to go and visit that. This is a privately funded flight, but the Kerbin Scientific Community has agreed to pay for the um, obligatory single stop at the orbital silo, as long as in return, once we reach this strange alien artifact, if we do find it, we will deploy a satellite for them so they can survey the area and um, further their scientific research. It's hard for the scientific community of Kerbin to independently fund these missions because the populace of Kerbin is more interested in domestic technology and comforts to really invest in space exploration. So since Spirit Wolf Corp have put these private ships for sale on the market and rich aspiring Kerbins are flying off around the cosmos, the scientific community are planning to piggyback their instrumentation at a much reduced price and benefit all of Kerb and Kind. Anyway, enough waffling for now. I've skipped forward all of this. Now, the problem I'm having here is that I need to refuel, but I have a satellite attached to the front of me. So, I've parked next to the silo here. Um, I'm trying to drift perfectly next to it in a parked orbit. Um, and I've just deployed this satellite temporarily where I can while I can refuel and then hopefully grab that satellite again and continue on our way it's all folded up and compact and you can see it drifting away from me quite fast here because it pinged off as I undocked it um, <laughs> which I didn't expect it to do so I need to do this very quickly now and catch that package up and recollect it before it gets too far from me I'll skip through most of the routine of docking and lining myself up here because people that follow my channel have seen me do this so many times as no point in making you see it again but if you are new to this channel please check out one of my other videos where I go into more detail rendezvous and docking. You can see our little package drifting away quite quickly there so I need to refuel, undock and go and grab that as soon as possible. I'm sure the scientists back on Kerbin won't be too happy to realise that we've um, lost their expensive payload. So a little RCS boost to get me past that station and um, I have to get out and pick it up. It's going to be quite difficult because it's extremely small and extremely light. It's just um, a little bit of nothing floating in space that I'm going to have to try and dock with. But um, I'm sure it can be done. I'm now completely full of fuel so I can get out to the moon and hopefully be able to land at a specific site which always takes a bit more fuel but then get back into orbit and um, return to Kerbin if I can. So that's the mission. I always like to correctly orientate um, the ship, especially these space planes, because then it makes RCS thrusting on a lateral plane much easier to do. So it's much more organic when you're trying to control it. You don't have to work out what is up, down, left and right. It's quite clear from the orientation of the ship. So I'm just pushing my prograde marker over the target here and a little boost towards it. Usual docking routine. If you're wondering why it's been a week since I last got a Kerbal video up, it's because my graphics card melted mainly due to the fact it was covered in detritus from um, my overly polluted environment because I am a smoker <laughs> and so I think I cooked my graphics card. Um, I have a new one now and um, back on track so expect more Kerbal videos soon. I've lined this up as slowly as I possibly can. just want to touch it and there you go but that's not connecting and I think it's because it's so light it really doesn't want to connect so I just left it for a while and um, I'll cut through that and it does eventually, there you go, it does eventually fit together. 
but that took longer than it ever has taken before. That was a good three minutes of wobbling around then before it did finally attach. I was worried at some point. But anyway, time to boost out to the moon. This is the trajectory I've taken. And the final burn. I'm not going in to as much detail as I have on other videos because I'm sure um, you can get to the moon and you know all about getting to the moon. If you don't, then please comment and I can help you do this. But just for the benefit of my um, subscribers who are quite familiar with all of this, I'm, I'm just cutting through all the routine stuff. So here we are arriving at moon, at the moon, the moon, um, and uh, I just want to get this as flat on the ecliptic as I possibly can because the location of this particular arch is um, almost on the equator. Thanks again to Suestra for um, pointing that out. I haven't come in quite straight so I'm just going to flatten that out. Always make this sort of maneuver at the ascending node to get you nicely on the ecliptic uh, efficiently and easily. So here's the moon, my old friend. It's been a while since I've been back to you. I remember that first time I landed on you with my horribly engineered bucket of bolts and the elation I felt staring up back at the sky and curbing and how far this game has come since. I'm just tightening my orbit here to a very low altitude sweep so I can spot this site from orbit and um, deploy this satellite over the site if I can. And there it's just come into view if you can see it just on the edge of the um, dark area which is that big crater, the big dominant crater on the um, visible hemisphere of the moon. You can see it right in the middle. At the end of this video you'll be able to see uh, where I'll show that to you more specifically where this site is if you want to come and find it. But for now let's deploy this satellite and fulfill our end of the bargain. Um, just a very simple probe that can survey the area and uh, try and uncover some of the mysteries of these strange lunar arches. Although it's not lunar is it? It's um, mooner, you know what I mean. And there it is pinging away from me a bit again, but um, hardly anything. It's still going to be a perfectly circular orbit, I think, all things considered. So here it is. I think it's time to rename this satellite because it came as part of my ship, so it has no name. Um, that will do. There's Kerbin in the background. Beam all this information back. I can see actually from this, I'm not quite directly over the site so I will have to change this orbit a little bit before I attempt this landing. Um, I'm not really looking forward to these sorts of landings because although Elysium does have vertical landing functionality it's, she's not best for this sort of landing. It's not um, as easy it would be for a rocket. She can be a little bit unstable. Um, so once I see this I'm gonna activate my engines and there it is. So I'm going to try and land as close to it as possible because I don't want to have to wander for miles across the lunar landscape and um, but I can see it's actually on a hill and hills aren't very good as you may know for landing top heavy rockets on so but I'm going to try and get right to the very top of that where it looks a little bit flatter so I'm just correcting my trajectory a little bit here get over to the left a little bit more looks about right slow her down. I'm just going to drift in but this is a bit of an issue because it is a slope here and this is looking a bit sloppy. So ease her down, ease her down. See I'm not, this is an example of how not to land on the moon. Uh, sorry about this. Just easy does it now. It's a bit of a slope so I have to be careful. Oh no that's awful. Um, apologies. Come on, Macy, get it down. Get it down. This is a bit dodgy. There you go. Stay. 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 We're down. Good. We're down. And there's the lunar arch in the background there. Looks like a bit of a short hop away. And uh, let's go and take a closer look at it. Just deploying the ladders now to um, allow us to get out. I'm a bit concerned about that landing. It was very sloppy and it's used a lot of fuel and uh, I really hope I've got enough to get back to Kerbin. Um, I might do that episode tomorrow actually. Um, so I'll get this out tonight and 
I'll do the return as a second episode so you can tune into that hopefully and see if I can get her back definitely need to get back to Kerbin or this is a failure it's not going to do very well for the Elysium production line if um, people are dying out there in space because their ships are stranded so yeah tune in for the next episode when I get it back but for now let's have a look at this arch look this is magnificent it's huge I'm not sure I mean it's supposed to be made by alien hands I presume I don't think it's a natural um, feature of the moon uh, but it's a bit crude to be made by a spacefaring civilization unless this was made by some primitive moona species that was here although I think that's um, pretty unlikely some low gravity <laughs> jumping first time I came to the moon I thought that was brilliant um, the way they'd modelled the low gravity although it does make him walk like a bit lucky like bats for the other team should we say <laughs> so here we are on the moon one of the easter eggs if you want to come and find this um, keep an eye out now for exactly where it is if you can find this crater the edge the northern edge of this crater it's quite obvious from orbit so just zoom in on that place it's nearly bang on the ecliptic and you should be able to find it so bye for now